Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to It Resolves. My name is Kevin. I'm Will. Guess what happened this weekend? <laughs> A thing. Yeah, pro tour. Yeah, the pro tour. Yes. We're going to talk about the pro tour. Yes, I guys. love watching professional magic. We're really excited. Today is pro tour coverage. Pro tour hour of devastation, obviously, was this past weekend. And today is our standard episode, so it just makes sense. Uh, yeah, it does. Before that, we do encourage you. Before we get into the episode, oh, yeah. follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, Patreon. Is that it? I don't normally do this, so I don't know. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, Twitch. All the above. Gmail. <laughs> Gmail. Follow us on Gmail. We still haven't gotten a random email, and I'm excited no, it's, about it's when fine. we will. All right, um, I, I want to see what it is. I can't wait. I cannot wait. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, oh, guys, that. we encourage you to follow us. We encourage you to hang out with yes. us, participate. We always do questions of the week, deck techs of the week, uh, things like that that you yeah, can participate you know. in. Um, so yeah, yeah. follow Beesh. us, Beesh. hang out with us, comment, Beesh. like, um, don't like, eat food, drink things. Yeah, <laughs> whatever things you got. I don't, I don't know. Grab yourself a beverage, guys. This is gonna be hopefully a little more in depth. A lot of speculation around the format of standard yes. right now it kind of cracked hours wide open once the guys <laughs> at the top do their thing us the little bottom feeders that's me <laughs> I, I i suckle on the information yeah that i gather and then i spew it back at you this is a really gross image kev yeah. at you i spew it back at fnm mm -hmm. when i'm playing these decks that i saw the pros play except i made some little changes that i think are for the better i was wrong <laughs> Pretty much all the time. Uh, but yeah, that's what happened, and I'm super pumped to get into it. Yeah, I am too. Before we get into it, though, we do we have our things. random we card of the things. day yeah. that we always get to do. Oh, yeah. I'm excited for this. I always am. Three, two, one. A classic card. Child of Night, one and a black for a 2-1 vampire with lifelink. Like, all right, these go in your core sets. These go in your yes. intro decks. These go, I mean... It teaches you a lot of fundamentals about magic, right? Yep. So lifelink as a mechanic, of course, yep. and then the value of a 2-1 creature versus a 1-1 one, one creature. That's the big yes. one for me. Yeah. Is you think you include more of these in 1-1s? One, for one, not always, because yeah. they simply die to 1-1s. One, yep. Um, that was one of the first lessons I ever learned, is that <laughs> toughness matters a lot. It does. Um, no, you're exactly yeah. right. I one mean, threes this is... are better than 2-1s. <laughs> That's all. Usually, I'll say. Um, um, yeah, most of the time. Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right, though. This is definitely a core sort of intro card. Yeah. Um, for any of you who started out, you probably played with this card. Yeah. You know, it's it's just one of the classics. Um, it is a really good card to teach you about core mechanics and power and toughness, and so I like it for that reason. Other than that, it's it's just classic. It's yeah. it's nothing too crazy good or anything. No, obviously. not at all. Um, um, I think in Vampire Tribal it's fun, but like, sure. other than that, and you play way better stuff at two. Oh than yeah, of you night, definitely but do. But I mean, it's a cool card. Yeah. And limited, Good to see it. Limited, it's fine. Yeah, you know, it's it's yeah, just fine. I would say. Um, but yeah, so yeah. as we stated at the top of the episode, we are going to be going over Pro Tour Hour of Devastation. Yes. It was in Kyoto uh, this this time, Japan, which is really cool. Our I ally. wish I could have gone, but I don't qualify for Pro Tours. So <laughs> neither does me. <laughs> <laughs> neither do i i did watch um for those of you who do watch coverage or uh just mm. hang out with some of the or know some of the people in the pro tour scene you might know marshall Sutcliffe. ah um, yeah and i did watch his day one coverage of the of the pro tour because he does vlogging and stuff mm -hmm. like that and i really love watching his vlogs because they're just really interesting you see some behind the scenes stuff and you get to hang out with it feels like i mean you know you hang out with him and some of his people so yeah. it's really really cool um i really like him I really enjoyed seeing Kyoto in the vlog. Yeah, uh, it so like cool it was really place, cool to right? see that they. Yeah, I would love to go to Kyoto, right? Like, that's yeah, awesome. <laughs> it seems great. Maybe once North Korea comes down a little bit. Anyway, um, yeah, Kyoto <laughs> looks awesome. Yes. Yes. That's the takeaway. <laughs> um, so, guys, the Pro Tour. I don't know how much you paid attention to the Pro Tour, but this one was a little bit interesting. Yes. Right? Uh, we're going to kind of go into uh, the six titans that made their way in the pro tour mm -hmm. gonna kind of stay away from the um the the lesser known decks this time talking yeah. about the six big ones um things that have changed things that have will change the format but we'll get into that in a second uh 
Kevin, first thoughts on the top eight, real quick. I was amazed, what? Uh, to say bud? the least, because I believe, and let me double check, one, two, three, four, five of the decks were mono red. And then one. And then one was a Rakdos uh, aggro deck. So basically the same principles. Yeah. Six of the top eight decks yep. were low to the ground aggro decks. Uh, granted, as we'll talk about when we get into the specifics of the deck list, mm -hmm. they've got a little bit more of the mid rangey feel and sure. a little bit more longevity than some of past red decks. Mm -hmm. uh, but besides that, we did see one Golgari Constrictor deck in the yep. top eight, as well as one Mono Black Zombies, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but the comeback red or Ramanop red yeah, uh, like came Ramanop in first. Uh, Apollo. Do you want to say the full name? It is um, <laughs> Palo Vitor de Rosa. Yes. Uh, he took away the win. Uh, congratulations to Paulo. Yes. Other he names. Also, sorry, he oh, also no, no. won Player of the Year and Rookie of the Year. He did. You're right. That's fantastic. Good for him. Round of applause. Yeah, of applause. yeah. Everybody be happy. Um, it's good. Be other... jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. One of them. <laughs> uh, other important names that we did see in the top eight. Sam Pardee and Sam Black coming in second and third, respectively. Uh, Seth yeah. Manfield is the other name that I was talking about. Oh, we uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Manfield. Came in eighth place, but he did just narrowly get into the top but, eight. I mean, yeah, top yeah, eight. it's Pro Tour, right? That's so, what you want. That's what you want. Um, Pro Tour top eights count. Yes. So congratulations mm -hmm. to all of the top eight uh, competitors, yeah. as well as everybody that, that participated in the Pro Tour. Mm -hmm. I think there were 460-ish players or something like that. Is that about the norm, you think? Uh, I think it depends a little bit. I mm -hmm. think, honestly... Um, it sticks around there for the most part just because it's the pro tour right these are people who are dedicated to playing they're going to be going wherever right. this happens to be um but i do think you get a few people that could drop off or go depending on where it actually is so yeah Kyoto location is, location out of is the way a little bit um, and there is a <laughs> giant magic scene in japan um, there is right absolutely. some of the best players in the world come from japan mm -hmm. um so i feel like it's a popular place to be i think so and whatnot um but with that do you want to move into ramen up red i do um we're gonna start there we're gonna start at the top yeah uh and it's ramen up red is interesting um in that it's kind <laughs> yeah. of teaching me to shut up about uh <laughs> deserts even though in the feature match you don't see a desert activation once um i guess it's nice to have it i don't know it feels bad <laughs> what's nice is that it doesn't take up spell slots yeah and that you get an, you thing. get an effect on something that's necessary. So the the namesake no. card of this is Ramanap Ruins, uh, which for two and two red you can tap it and sack a desert to shock somebody mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. Um, and all that really does is provide you with that extra shock effect to give you those last two points of damage. Or right. in a pinch, you know, you can do something. It's it's just longevity, right? That's what we've mm -hmm. been talking about uh, in past episodes, and this is sort of a prime example of that. I think it's yeah. it's really perfect. There are other cards also which give it a lot of longevity. Things like Chandra is played in oh, a yes. lot of these decks. Uh, Hazaret actually made its appearance in these decks, which is fantastic. Again, yeah. being able to shock some things uh, for dead cards in your hand. And then there was Glorybringers, things like that, that made it its way into some of these lists. Not mm -hmm. all of them. And in fact, in the top eight, the the top, the winner, excuse me, did not have any Glorybringers. Uh, uh, yeah, he did. Did he? Uh, he sided uh, Sideboard, but... sorry. Yes, yeah, they he did main. have them in sideboard. Yeah. My apologies. Uh, I saw him play them. I know he did. Yeah, yeah. Another card that did make uh, its impact was a braid, which I'm really happy to see. Oh, a braid is... Such a good card. A braid is excellent. Yeah. Um, I think a braid might make its rounds through standard for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, deals three damage for two, which is fixed lightning bolt, and I think it's honestly fine. Yeah. I harped on open fire once being just a really terrible lightning bolt. <laughs> a braid feels like the nice balance. Yeah, right. I agree. And you still get choose tar or destroy target artifact. Yeah, it's. Do you? Ah, never mind. No, I don't like it more than bolt. Never mind. I'd no, say the no, long no, no. the Definitely the option not. to blow up an artifact is enticing. It's nice. It is. It's great. But um, the and, efficiency of bolt, I think, is to you. I do think that this gives outs to, and I may be speculating here. Hmm. Moving this card, and I'm looking at modern now. Something okay. like a braid. Uh, you would not necessarily switch it out for Lightning Bolt, mm -hmm. but if you're against an Affinity deck, if you're against something like that, Ooh. do you sideboard these in? Uh, you you if, know what I'm saying? If you are... Well, no, it's not the target player, so Burn doesn't really need it. Hmm. I, it's I just know. a thought, right? Because I feel they're like creature-heavy, they're artifact-heavy, this hits everything. Is it worth it? 
is it small enough that you need to do although i feel like destroying something is so final like there's cheeky ways you can save a creature through three damage yeah well that's the thing so for instance with against a ravager you can shock them or deal three to them where they can just sack some artifacts and pump it up and then it doesn't die or you You can just just destroy it it and they have to just let it die Mm -hmm. um so i mean they can play around with a little bit but you get the idea right sick play first of braid deal three yeah sack a few things second of braid destroy (laughs) (laughs) that's so dirty two for three (laughs) two for four maybe Uh, Uh, it it's just a thought i don't know if that's gonna happen but we may see it that'd be kind of cool to see it in modern yeah i mean being a modern player i'd like it but i don't know if it's efficient enough I don't know, because if it was three damage to dark creature or player, maybe. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, the appeal of this over other burn removal spells is that it's got options to do various things, right? But since it's only to target creature... It does shoot that down a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. It's a worse flame slash as far as the burn side of things goes. However, it does give you the destroy target artifacts. So I actually do really Uh, like this card, though. Obviously, it's making its way around standard right now. It's about a $3 uncommon. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. I think yeah. it goes in a lot of anything that runs red. I think you might want it. Is it control? Is it red deck wins. Sorry, Ramanep wins. Whatever. Uh, we can call it red. Yeah, it's red deck wins. Red red deck wins. I mean, well, it honestly, does hit most red decks. That's kind of what I wanted to talk about. This is not your typical red deck wins. It's not. Right? Because this has got a really strong early game mm-hmm. and then a lot of clean options to transition well into You're the You're exactly game. right. So the late, late game, I think, maybe not. I don't think it stabilizes yeah, well once its sure. bombs are gone, mm-hmm. right? But you talk about Chandra having reach, uh, Hezeret having reach. Yep. A 5-4 with haste, indestructible. That's like, nothing to shake a stick at. No, I'm and, saying, and you, know? <laughs> you, you don't see them in, in Red Deck wins all the time. I mean, no. for four mana, four is really probably the top that you want to go. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I mean, again, Glorybringer being in the sideboard mm-hmm. and in some of the main board decks, it's that's my absolute top end yeah but i do think four mana is really where you want to have your bombs right five mana sure. the the glory bringer is really just there for in my opinion for specific matchups yeah well, i um, think the glory bringer is great in the mirror especially i think you're exactly right uh yeah, yeah it's great in the mirror it's great in green black situations uh where if you can f- stick it down turn five for sure you can probably deal with a lot of things it deals with yeah. a beefed grim flare right they get to four four uh or is yes it five five i think it is four four if i'm not mistaken i believe it is as well um which is great grim grim flare is awesome yes such um, a good card but it, it takes care of that it takes care of virtuous gear hulk that hasn't pumped itself right so there's enough things that glory bringer hits that you definitely yeah. want it. i'm honestly impressed it's not main boarded i think you can make an argument for taking out uh hezaret for mm-hmm. glory bringer main board Hazaret is cheaper. Hazaret. It is cheaper, and I think, uh, I think Hazaret is better in more situations solely because you don't have to attack with for it to be good. I where I think Glorybringer is at its best when you're attacking. I'm gonna disagree. Okay, here's why. Uh, Glorybringer at turn five, and you can kind of make a case for Hazaret being turned on at turn five, but Glorybringer has no restrictions. Once That's you get fair. five mana, it is online. You can start shooting things and swinging in for four damage. Yeah. It, reach being important in aggro and red decks mm-hmm. glory bringer has flying has haste blows agreed. up a thing agreed which that's fantastic uh Hezaret doesn't give you creature removal it does not it makes you pitch a card which really if you're pitching a card if you're in, pitching it's going to be that's dead, fine. Yeah. probably you're going to draw lands you discard your lands right probably <laughs> but that being said it's you have to have a what is it one or fewer yeah you have to have like a dead hand to turn on Hezaret. With Glorybringer, you have options just to, I don't know, keep drawing good stuff. You don't have to pitch things to make Glorybringer good. Agreed. Here's what I like about Hazaret, though. It's a repeated effect that you can do essentially as many times as you have the mana to do it and the cards card, in hand. Yeah. And assuming that you do have the cards in hand, which ideally you're only going to have one or two by the time you play this, you discard a card, deal two, then you get to attack for five. And that is a solid turn four like that or turn five probably but like you can make that yeah. happen I, well it has to be turn six here well no but here's what i'm thinking on turn four you drop hazaret yeah you're saying you two, have okay. a card in your hand on the next turn you discard it using his effect and then you get to swing in her do you effect. see her effect pardon me her effect. i should be politically correct but you know what i'm saying like five yeah. damage you single jack a lady no need no man <laughs> i also think the indestructible is relevant 
Uh, uh, I think that's important. Less relevant, honestly. I you mean, so? you're going to be trading creatures in this deck. I don't think you really like it. It definitely helps, but yeah. I mean, um, I don't know. I yeah. prefer Hazaret mainboard, but I do like the include of Glorybringer. I don't know that I would mainboard it either, though. I like Glorybringer just because you get that creature removal in a deck that does not have it. Right? You yeah. got you got Shock, which deals with a lot of things, but I mean, in against green black constrictor which is still the majority of the field yeah like you're not hitting a ton does chandra's plus two it's yeah it's each opponent as well so Chandra minus three though is uh ah, that's four. true deal four um, uh so and it, i want to at that point it's a form it's a four mana bolt that then dies next turn i don't know well something i also wanted to mention and you mentioned shock is in this deck mm-hmm. i think we've talked before about shock versus magma spray and this is a perfect mm-hmm. example where shock is needed over the magma spray. Absolutely. Um, again, you're burning. You're dealing to the face as much mm-hmm. as you can. And so the flexibility to deal to target player versus just a target creature is yeah. so important here. Um, and so I'm happy that that came up just because we've talked about it before. And this is sure. an example where as a deck that actually is competitively viable, obviously, uh, shock is the one that you want to see over the magma yeah. spray. Most often, I think a lot of people run the magma spray, right? And is Probably. it control decks, things like that? We well, can those. Both. You do. You run a, a sort of smattering of it, but mm-hmm. I do think the Magma Spray has been sort of on the forefront. This is a perfect example of why Shock is good, right? You want Absolutely. to burn to the face. Absolutely. And it's perfect. Yeah. In in Red Deck Wins, uh, Reach and Spells to Face is really nice. Yep. So I'm glad you clicked Bowmat Courier. Favorite card in this deck. I love this card. Bowmat Courier is such an interesting rare. Uh, <laughs> one drop with haste. It, it gives you needed effects in red deck wins right yeah. so gets in really cheap just a ping of damage every turn pew 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 and then it <laughs> refills your hand yeah sweet and turns on if you want it the um permanent you control left of the battlefield you know what i'm talking about oh uh, i can't remember the mechanic revolt that's it yeah if uh and this deck doesn't have any revolt in it but i'm just saying that's an no, option yeah, you that's... you sack the bow mat right or is it a discard a card discard your hand sack it all right there you go yeah when you do that you have no card in your hand and what this does is like you swing in with all of your creatures if you know it's gonna die you crack it right because it doesn't matter i'd say depending on how many cards are in your hand at the time but like if you've got more cards exiled than are than those that are in your hand then you just do it and in a red deck wins you just want cards like that it doesn't really yeah card (laughs) draw in red decks yeah that's like an extra edge yes Um, absolutely and that's it's I think Bowmat is its only form of card advantage, really. Uh, yeah. Except I think for Chandra, it, maybe, because you get to yeah. Peel I mean, and spell. technically, um, semi card advantage, I guess you would say. I mean, sort it's of. Sort you at of least like see an card, extra card yeah. a turn, um, at least. But it turns or you into a shock. A, for a shock. Free. Yeah. Yeah. And so nice. Um, other really cool cards in this deck. Again, it runs some deserts uh, in the way That's of so Sun Scorched Desert and Scavenging me. Grounds. Uh, Scavenging Grounds is very good against uh, graveyard focus decks. So against the Constrictor decks, exile all cards from all graveyards. Sure, uh, it sure, is sure. pretty pretty strong against that. Um, I mean, we have kind of teched <clears throat> away from the uh, delirium. delirium. Yeah, no, exactly. Phase. But you do still see, as we mentioned, Grim Flares, uh, Ishkanaz. That's very true. Traverse the Odin Wall. All of these cards do right. show up in the Ooh, in the green exactly. black deck, and so it's nice to have that as an option. For I, sure, you are right. Um, yeah. uh, as far as creatures go, we already mentioned a lot, but on cop on crop crasher. I uh, love that it makes its way moving here. its way into constructed. Yeah, uh, Earthshaker Kinra is an interesting one. A uh, very strong card. Uh, I think. I mean, we we're seeing Earthshaker Kinra and Hezaret particularly spike in price. And yeah, I, I think this is why. Yeah. So this deck got spoiled. I'll say spoiled, but. A, f- a form of this deck was released on YouTube uh, for a while. Yep. Or, or, or a while ago. Um, and then we started to see Hezaret and Earthshaker yep. kind of sp- like rise up in price. This is the perfect deck for Earthshaker. It, I understand now mm-hmm. why Earthshaker is what it is. Uh, it's it's vanilla creature form. Not awesome. No, no. But at then all. it's eternalized. Yeah. No, Ooh, you're exactly a four right. four with haste for what is it six yeah and, and this is what we're talking about it gives you oh, longevity it gives yes. you mid to late game plays that most red decks up until now haven't really had have. yeah this is and the so perfect standard great. for a red deck like this to it come is. out it is you've got access to so many cool like village messenger turns to a two two with haste yeah eventually like ideally even if sorry, it doesn't haste menace 
pardon me. But even if it doesn't, it's still a 1-1 one, one with haste, and that's so exactly cool. what you want. Like, yeah. you just have so much potential upside on the mid to late game, yeah. and then just a strong early game, as, as any red deck would. Another yeah. one, Carry Zev, very cool, as a 3-of in the top, in the winning deck list. Um, in the main board. In sure. the main board, yeah, yeah. And it's That just one's really card. interesting to me. I think it's cool because in the... I'll have to check the other lists, but if you're running the mirror matchup, this doesn't die to shock. Right. Uh, and this gets you an extra attacker every turn. Yeah. I think it's, it's really sweet. It's really solid. It looks like from the other deck list, they're running yeah, two I'll or have three. Um, yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a good include. Yeah, definitely. Um, really, really cool. Uh, smattering of sideboard cards, Chandra's Defeat, Aether Sphere Harvester, things like that. Um, Pia Nalar makes a comeback. Happy to see Pia. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't really think she ever left. She's, you know, she's just value. <laughs> yeah, Sand yeah. Strangler is interesting. It is. Yes, I agree. Uh, if you control the desert, or there is a desert card in your graveyard. You may have it deal three damage to target opponent. Yeah. A lot of times, because you do have at least eight to ten deserts in these decks, uh, you're gonna you're gonna hit that right. And so I think so. Um, it just gives you a little bit of extra damage. Yeah. Savage Alliance is a card I'm really excited about. I just like these alliance cards. I think they're pretty interesting. So to see this, I hadn't seen that one. Cool. Escalate one. Um, oh, the escalates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an escalate card. Yeah, correct. And then Glorybringer, some extra Chandras, stuff like that. So very cool nice. to see Red Deck uh, wins. Winning. Winning. Um, I things. do want to very quickly touch on the Rakdos aggro deck. Sure. Some of the differences, the the sort of black cards that were splashed. Emmet sure. Eternal is a really interesting include. I thought this um, would be great in Constructed. I think um, you're right. I mean, I think it does really well. It's a huge beater, and if they're not playing too many yeah. spells each turn, then you're in a good position. Right. right. I think um, it's great against Is It Control when it is. a lot of times it's land go. Yeah. Um, so he's going to stay pretty heavy if he doesn't get counter, that is. Yeah. Um, now he, I mean, you know, they're, they're spell heavy, so they don't, mm -hmm. you know, they'll die eventually, but <laughs> a 5-5 five, five for 3 is nothing to be uh ashamed of no not at all um i also really like eldrazi mm. obligator oh, this is sweet. a card i really like um and it when it was first brought into standard and mm. some of the eldrazi decks were running around there was a variant that ran the obligator but it just wasn't as strong as some of the other variants so i'm okay. happy to see this make a little bit of a comeback um pulling in a top eight win that's always exciting. i love it it's funny they give you devoid it's ETB effect, and then they're like, oh, uh, let's give a haste too. Yeah, sure. I like <laughs> that put haste, haste is like thrown at the bottom. No, you're exactly right. Uh, Soul Scar Mage made its way into the Rakdos nice. deck. This also made its way into some of the mono red deck lists. Uh, just mm. a very strong prowess trigger, things like that. It it's um, This is a weird card in that it's got pseudo infect. Yeah, right. Against creatures. No, I agree. It is a little weird. I think, honestly, I think red deck wins players. Guys who are building Ramen Up Red. Side Soul Scar Mage. Against Hazaret. Yeah, that's how you kill it. No, that's a really good point. Yeah, that's solid. How you kill it. I really it, like it. It deals damage in minus one, minus one counters, not its actual damage. So, yeah. yeah. No, it is an interesting include, and I do think it plays to that against the indestructible pretty mm -hmm. well. So, very cool. Uh, collective brutality. If you're playing black, you might as well love it. Uh, <laughs> cut to ribbons. Yeah, I one love of your this card. favorite cards. Uh, I put it in. Uh, is a control. Yeah, because I had the thing that gives you energy tap for any mana so ribbons was my like extra win extra win essentially con, my yeah. reach thing um, yeah i think cut to ribbons is awesome cut to ribbons if you don't know it's sorcery one in a red cut deals four damage to target creature so it's a, a worse flame slash yeah that's what it amounts to yeah. Yeah. ribbons however x and two black uh with the aftermath effect obviously each opponent loses x life yeah. uh so it is very strong it scales very well just a solid card uh mm -hmm. incendiary flow just more burn i think that's about it for the differences yeah um uh the inf if near if near deadlands, right. yep. uh sack of desert uh put two negative one negative one counters on target creature and opponent controls mm. that is an interesting include again it plays with the deserts uh ramen up ruins being in this sure. deck and stuff like that it's removal i kind of like that more than the ruins yeah because it's removal um only time you can Okay. Yeah. Sorcerer speed. Um Yeah. I think I like that more than Ramen Up. I'm not sure. I think it's good because it's removal. Yeah. But I do think the ruins decks. plays to the deck, deck so much sure. better. Um yeah. and so that's why I think it's just the auto include. But sure. yeah. Um very interesting take on the red deck wins. Throwing some black in there. I like it. Um yeah. standard 
uh, Golgari Constrictor coming in at number two. Uh, I would say. I mean, it's got a little bit of flavor to it. Yeah, in the I was going to of... say. I don't know about standard there, pal. What do you think? Friend. Do you think? Why don't you, uh, you go. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah. Hover over uh, Cletus there. Yeah, Kalitas. Um, uh, Cletus. Kalitas. Um, this is a card that I've seen in sideboards of green black decks a lot more I like than it. I have in the main I like board. It. It's main this has board. two main board. Uh, so that's like really it. interesting. Very strong creature, obviously. Super, super good. Um, it looks like they took like out it. a Rishkar for one of the Kalitas. Kalitas, whatever. Kalitas. Um, and potentially a Gear Hulk, maybe. Uh, but you know, and that's a choice that I've seen a lot of green black players yeah. make is to take out the Gear Hulks. Yeah. Uh, just to lower the curve, make it faster. Yeah. Even the Gear Hulk is so good. I mean, it's super powerful. Yeah. It also plays to the one one counter, con the Constrictor side of things, so it's great in that exactly. way. Exactly. However, um, with all the red deck wins going around, I think it's better to to be a little bit more low to the yeah. ground. Um, and the Life Link, I think, is also relevant. Uh, sure. that's on Kalidos. So sure. very, very important. It does run two grasp and four fatal push, which Main is board. I think Main is really board. interesting. Yep. Main yep. board, correct. Uh very, very cool. Traverse, Liliana the Last Hope, obviously, and Nissa Voice of Zendikar making an appearance, as always. Yeah, so um, I mean this is I wouldn't say standard necessarily, but no, it's got a got, few cars that are Yeah. The numbers are kind of shifted around. Um Nissa, of course, Liliana you know yeah includes they really turn the deck on and well nissa more so than others yeah um ooh, gaunty lord of luxury in the sideboard yeah well no that actually makes sense most oh, of the green black it. decks I have run that in the sideboard already so I'd that's a main no, board. no surprise uh one i card think gaunty's that, so busted <laughs> yeah he's super good doomfall did make its way into the sideboard for this which i think is quite interesting a one of it that's a one of it's just a catch-all exile a creature it's super good. Um, other than that, it's a fairly standard board. Ishkana, Transgress, Obnixilis, things like that. One land did make it in that is new. Um, Haship Oasis uh, as a way to pump up a creature, give it a giant growth. Why not? Um, other For than three that. three and you lose the land. Seems great. Yeah, no, but it gives I you the it. out. It's not good, but it gives you the out. Um, it's such a clunky concept. It's so expensive. You got a sack of land. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. No, it I doesn't. Agree. It doesn't. But the pros are playing, <laughs> which means everyone will play them. Yes, you're I, exactly right. It feels so strange. Um, moving on to the final deck in the top eight that we're going to be talking about: yep. Mono Black Zombies. Kalidas making its way into there again. Again, Naturally. I actually think this might be part of the reason all these decks are in the top eight solely because lifelink is really good against the red deck yep um it also pairs very well against quite a few of the creatures uh things like that a very heavy removal package with three fatal push and four grasp of darkness does obviously run dark salvation um and liliana's Gosh. mastery yeah dude. other than that it's mono black zombies relentless dead lord of the accursed mm -hmm. dread wanderer it hasn't changed yeah. other than the if near dead lands yep. and cletus uh, Westvale Abbey is also really cool in this stuff. Yeah, I don't know if that's been in every single one. But. I don't know either, but it is a really cool include. Uh, if Near Deadlands making its way as a removal land, uh, which I think is quite good. Exactly. exactly. Uh, sideboard, we got more Liliana's, Transgress, Sky Sovereign, which is a quite good include, I think. Yeah. Uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger, Never Return, and Dispossess. They're running it now. <laughs> that's funny. Explain that to me um anyway that's our top eight deck list yep. uh very very cool very interesting to see a lot of red deck wins what do you think do you think we're going to continue to see some red decks in the top eight you will see maybe one or two okay maybe probably more so one yeah see here's the thing about red deck wins um and this deck might prove me wrong uh only because it is a little different and that yeah. it's got more longevity but most of the time red decks they're like a giant constricting blanket of Swiss cheese where it, you could get suffocated by that giant piece of cheese, but there's holes all up in it, man. <laughs> what? It's the holes. Holes are all up in it. Yeah. So sure. Fatal Push hits almost everything. Yeah. Other than Hezzeret. Hezzeret. Except the minus four, minus four, because it's not dealing damage. I'm pretty sure that kills it. Grasp. Uh, That's what yeah. I meant. What yeah, I, I believe you said fatal push. 
Fatal push does hit. Well, most not, things, fatal push is everything, but I was grasp, thinking grasp. I do believe yeah, also yeah. hits. Uh, literally I think everything. that'll kill it. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Chandra's really the only thing it can't interact with. Mm -hmm. uh, most removal out there, um, but even so, like mono black zombies outclasses most creatures here until you get your earth shaker flips sure until you resolve a glory bringer um i like. also think a card that we haven't seen at all is bantu's last reckoning and it wrecks house on this like i don't know True. if it's i think it's a sideboard option for yes. black decks exactly and that's what i'm that's exactly. i i don't think you main board it by any means but i do think sideboard option because we've seen so many red deck wins and so many sort of low to the ground creature based decks i think some of these zombie decks and even some of the constrictor decks are probably going to start running in the sideboard as a one or two of a bantu's last reckoning well here's um, it I, gives you the out y giving it more thought yeah i don't know how much you get to stabilize though after you after you resolve the last round. I think it depends on how many cards are in their hand at that point. And that's where you have to time it. I right? mean, that's fair. That's fair. But Bantu doesn't kill Hezret. It does not. However, the first three turns, they're going to be playing their one, twos, and three ofs, which means at that point, mm -hmm. they're probably going to have one or two cards in hand. And assuming they don't have the mana or they haven't gotten the, uh, is it Scrap Heap Scrounger? No, it's not. What is Bone it? Bone Courier. Bone Courier. Uh, that refills their hand assuming they don't have that you can just steal a game with the with the board wipe because they're not going to be able to refill their hand in time to make it out of that i mean they're just not well they really effectively have another turn because you're going to be on back to turn one that's fair but they're only getting one extra card out of that and in a red deck wins while well, that's good but if it's hazard though but that's a you're depending on a card i mean that i don't know that seems if it's hazard though if you if you are throwing a sweeper at a board that you lose creatures to, probably if you're let's say black ring constrictor for yeah. instance, you're gonna lose creatures too. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you've got Nissa out there who can just yeah flop a plant down to, to block <laughs> Hazaret. Has or Liliana the last hope to deal with any low to the ground threats. And that's the other thing. I mean, Liliana does kill a good number of your creatures. Yeah. Um, I just don't know that that's and out enough it saves you a turn i just don't know it might be too difficult to stabilize after that i mean it because might be you, but you're i do think it's and yeah they're yeah. not and that's fair i do think the land's not untapping that's a huge deal but yeah. i do think it's it's a worthwhile consideration at this it point it is it solely is solely because there's so many yeah i mean and that's does. fair when there's a standard with a sweeper right yeah. uh yeah. creature heavy strategies just become all that more vulnerable and here's a deck right. that i was hoping to see uh, when hours released that we didn't see Grixis control. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that I think would run the Bantu's last reckoning solely because it's a control deck and it doesn't matter. But I just, I was hoping to see it. I think, I think it would have its, I think it could have a very good matchup against the red deck wins because it has so many answers. I think it's missing its top end. That's what I'll say. I think um... nickel bullets <laughs> is not a reliable top end. There are standard decks going around with him as the top end though. Not in a not necessarily competitive. Where they at though? Yeah, exactly. They're not in the top eight though. But here's my thing. So if you're going a control route, you get more options. So you can run Doom Falls. You can run Never to Return. You can run Dispossess. I guess if you wanted to for Artifact Hate, you can run Reckoning. You can run uh, Grass of Darkness, Fatal Push. Like you get so many options because of Black in yeah. the way of removal um that you will find ways to answer these decks i'm not saying i think you're right i think the top end isn't necessarily there um but i do think you have a lot of options in the way of the removal package if you go that way sure sure and i mean maybe it becomes just a planeswalker control deck you maybe can, two of nickel bowl is two of liliana two of chandra uh chandra you have and, also if that's you want true. That. but they they keep you at least threatening well game, and that's right? what you need yeah no you're exactly right yeah and that, and that's my thing you've got plenty of answers but if there's nothing to build to mm -hmm. and i don't think especially against red deck wins in particular i yeah. don't think that counting on a turn seven is going to get you there no no no. but right. i do think so if you were to build G grixis control you would mm -hmm. also get kalidos as a win condition and as just a threat potentially um there's a lot i mean it just feels like there's so much support for it all it's missing is that one key card for me and i i feel like it's very very close to happening and i just want be. i want to see a build and maybe i'll build one just to test it or something 
Let's um, do it. I think it'd be a good idea too. I think it's a really, really good plan because I I think the is it control decks, uh, which did make up some of the meta game at this pro tour, um, are very good. Mm. But I think the removal in black is so worthwhile that you need to have that in there. Dude. You know what I mean? Bug torment. Oh. Blue, <laughs> black, green ramp into torment of hailfire is the win. Yeah, I'm down for that. Boom, done. Bug ramp. I'm I'm good with that. You get fog effects in the early turn. A lot of people are not on the torment hype. That's all right. I am. But... I am too. <laughs> I love torment. Uh, there was a modern deck that I saw that was a torment deck. Uh, it ran a lot of like hedron archives and things to ramp you. Cool. And then just tormented out the win. It did pretty well. Like it was pretty awesome. Um, if there is not, a standard deck with it. If also, you're not but... planning on it, it kills creature decks. Like. <laughs> yeah. Because they don't have a counter so <laughs> stuffed away somewhere. But yeah, if you resolve a Torment of Hailfire late game, let's say you do it for five. That's potentially 15 damage or five permanents destroyed. Or five cards in hand. Non-land? No, that's yeah, just permanents. Non-land permanents. Yeah. Um, it, there's so much. I, I don't know. That card is so good. I it mean, is. I know giving your opponent just on a basis of like general magic There's rules giving your opponent with. options is not an ideal situation you're however right. none of the options are good at all <laughs> like no. unless you're pitching lands late game but even so but even so you now have information that they have only lands in their hands so like that's something to work off of imagine <clears throat> first torment <laughs> then the next turn another torment like back well, to back cancel cancel so, the season you're done so in the video that i watched which i believe mm -hmm. was by mtg goldfish if i'm not mistaken i believe it was against the odds uh the series against the odds with mm -hmm. seth okay um i believe if i'm not mistaken he ran a torment and then they countered it and then he had mana he left mana open to torment again just because he knew they had the counter genius like you just torment for a few and they're like, oh, well, I have to counter it. Yeah. And then you torment again for like one or two more and just wreck house. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, torment's sweet. Torment is a very Especially cool in a format like modern where you can get it again. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. That's dirty. Ooh. Snap. Torment. I was going to say, question. Does snap still get Flashback it? is its cost, so you can pay you can whatever. X and still. Yeah, you can still do it. Mm. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> mm. Fat um, caster into torment. No, that doesn't work. It's only instant. No, 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 no. Never mind. But you can snap into it. Um, very cool. Anything else you wanted to mention about the pro tour? Um, oh, another deck that did show up that was not in the top eight. Uh, green red ramp. Yeah. Uh, hitting some old old school Eldrazi Ulamog making a comeback. Um, it that didn't obviously perform super well, but it did relative. I mean, I saw some feature matches with it. It was a cool deck yeah um definitely it it just i don't think it was fast enough i think this there's so many low to the ground decks right now that... i mean this really got injected <laughs> with ramen up red so <laughs> yes it um yeah it, it skirted in under so many things yeah. um it definitely beats the red green ramp deck yeah absolutely. Um, i'm surprised honestly mono black didn't perform better against it um uh, yeah it seems to me that mono black would outclass it eventually uh, and stabilize better maybe i mean most I mean, of their creatures come back yeah. no apparently not <laughs> i'm surprised well i mean one of them did yeah <laughs> I was gonna say, one of them did um, maybe it's cletus making maybe the difference. i do think that made a fairly large difference because we see it in the only other two top eight decks so cletus all right anyway <laughs> um, i thought of um, a, a bluegrass intro to cletus trader of get like the mini series <laughs> i just want his rock and chair in get uh <laughs> in get yeah straw uh is that not a plane uh yeah. is yeah. get a plane yeah i don't think so says cletus trader of cat i don't know to be honest are you looking it up right i now? am um yeah, I do think Kalidus actually does make a difference in a lot of these decks, though. You see it in the two top eight decks, and it's lifelink. It matches up against the creatures really well, mm. which is pretty awesome. So, uh, what's up? Uh, um, get Jewish divorce? Question <laughs> mark. <laughs> Traitor of Jewish divorce. 
that's hilarious. When Jewish couples divorce, they <laughs> must obtain both a civil and Jewish divorce <laughs> kit. It is the um uh the the uh Jewish term for religious and civil divorce. All right. Well, he's the traitor of that. Way to be there. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> All right, moving off of Pro Tour, congratulations to the top eight wow. winners. Uh, we do appreciate all of the pros <laughs> way doing the most. Yeah, that was great. Um, yes, no, um, Pro Tours are generally really fun because they test for these things weeks, weeks, months in advance, so oh, they yeah. have strategies you don't see coming. Yeah. I did not expect Red Deck to be so I did prevalent. not either. I thought it was more like a budget deck that I know, did too. was going to be decent, but not like great. Um anyway all right moving on to our cracker packs we do want to Indeed. thank our sponsor first and foremost grand slam comics and collectibles we had a giveaway that ended today we actually picked a winner today boom, um, boom. we plan to do a lot more with them but they have done a lot for us in the way of providing cards uh which helps us keep this going because if we had to pay for every little thing i don't know that we could manage it i'd, so, be, I'd be a sad podcast yes host. so thank you to grand slam we encourage you to check them out their links are in the description so as always uh hang out with them hang out with clam right. what's your goal card oh we talked about it buddy torment torment of hailfire i did not get it <laughs> i got mirage mirror though oh that's cool sure <laughs> it is uh, cool it, it is, is cool. a cool card um it's I, good i think it'll be played more in like commander and other stuff all right what am i gonna get are you I, ready uh, no i better not be torment i'm gonna kill you this torment all right, hold on. Let's do it this way. Oh, you best. <laughs> I got Torment of Hailfire. We're going to have a my talk. My goal card isn't Torment of Hailfire. We're going to have a talk after the episode. What was my goal card? Frank's Sanity. Mm. Uh, well, that's my pick. Uh, mm. But there is also a Torment of Scarabs, if we're going to go on the mm. Torment theme. Um, no, it's Hailfire. Yeah, it's Hailfire. That card's amazing. Isn't it? <laughs> um, Tenacious Hunter is my pick. Oh, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah. Very good card. Yeah, Tenacious Hunter is awesome. Tenacious Hunter is a build around for minus one, minus ones. It's yeah. also a bomb. Yeah. Vigilance and Death Touch on a 4 4 4 4. Well, it's going to be a 3 3. No. When it has, it has to have no. the counter on it. No. As long as a creature. Oh, my apologies. Indeed. A 4 4. F O R 4. Yes. It's a funny sentence to say. <laughs> um, yeah, other notable picks. Without weakness is honestly sneaky. Giving something indestructible. Uh, yeah. Uh, lethal Sting works is going to work in my minus one, minus one counter deck that I build with this pack. Um, but yeah, Tenacious Hunter is a bomb. I love the flavor Great text card. on Torment of Palefire. Don't you? Your God Pharaoh has returned. Yes, I memorized it. Wow. <laughs> yep. Did you want this? No, you keep it. All right, cool. I've got enough. <laughs> Will's mad, uh, and that I'm, means I'm it's not. time to end the episode. I am not mad. I'm happy for you. Go build your Grixis control deck. I will. It's going to be great. I actually might. Um, <laughs> I don't think it works into the top end. It's missing its thing. It's missing its thing. It's missing its thing. Uh, we'll That's see fine. if we can find it, though. It um, resolves community. That's our pet project. Help us make Grixis control. Give us yeah. a deck list. Suggest What do you stuff. think? What you thinking? Yeah, we'd like to see that. Right. Um, and net deck it. Wink. Um, all right, <laughs> guys, with that, I think we are going to get out of here. Oh, yeah. As always, we do thank you for your support and for watching these episodes, listening to these episodes, whatever you're doing, however you're doing it, as Will likes to say. I do like to say that. Um, but thank you guys again. Have you we had are that hair get sticking out. out this entire time? I hope so. Has it really been sticking out? Sweet. We're going to get out of here, guys. <laughs> My name is Kevin. My name's Will. And this has been It Resolves. Solves. Solves.